Sagittarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for mid-October 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we can dip our toes in the energy and see what's going on for the lovely Saggies out there. I hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going here. My gods, talk to me about Sagittarius and what we got coming as we're moving on into mid-October, one of the best times of year, if you ask me. What's happening with my friends? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card, then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot, just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Saggy. My God, it's talk to me. What's happening? Thank you. Nice and quick. Only a few shuffles. And there it is. And what is this energy that's been around you for quite a while? Let me move that out of the way. Sorry about the noise, my friends. But you see the imagery here? We have like the two little clown figures. And there's a lot of mental action happening here, which has been a big thing for the Saggy readings lately. Now, I do know Sagittarius's are thought driven for fire signs, very philosophical and such. But there's a lot of daydreaming happening here. Um, before we fully dive into it, though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the October subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk about this card. So the interesting thing about this card is we have these two little ballerina clown looking figures. The one is down here taking a little nap, a little snooze. The other one is on a tightrope. And I always interpret this card as this one daydreaming about doing this. So it could be a future focus for a lot of you. You might be focused on the future, where you're going, what you want to do, making plans. This is how I'm going to handle this and that. This is a common energy I've been seeing for you for like weeks now. Okay, I feel like I've even gotten this exact card for you a, a couple of times in recent weeks and months. So if not you, this is very much thought driven and it makes sense with what we were seeing last week. And we'll talk about last week's reading in a moment, but there's a lot of mental action, a lot of mental things happening here. So if not you, this could be someone you're connected to. There is a lot of thought. There's a lot of daydreaming, just going through things in their head. If it's not a future focus, okay? I'm not going to say whether it's a good or bad thing to daydream and run daydream or not. I do a lot of daydreaming myself, but we're just going to put that down right there. Let's get into tarot. And yes, I always say that first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote. Let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into the intuitive juicy stuff. Let's see what's happening here for my Saggies. And while we get this deck ready, let's talk about last week's reading. So I did mention all the mental energy I was seeing in last week's reading. It was titled, They Are Nervous. Now it didn't particularly feel like it was all your energy felt more like somebody else, like someone on edge. So much me mental energy trapped up that someone was becoming a little anxious, nervous about something. So hopefully there's been an outlet for that energy. We'll see. As you know, the energy could really bleed over into the next week and stuff like that. But let's see what's happening for Saggy. Um, and yeah, you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone you're linked to. So let's get these three cards out here. What's happening for Sagittarius, please? What's happening for my friends? Thank you. All right, King of Wands energy, your energy. So this could be a linchpin of this reading. Could be literally representing you, male or female, does not matter. Okay. Talking about where you're putting your energy and such. Let's get a couple more. I do like the King of Wands, but it could have a little, I don't want to say complication in in a fire sign reading. We have the Eight of Pentacles working towards something here. Someone's a busy bee with the Eight of Pentacles happening right in the center. Let's get one more. It's a lot of effort or want for effort. Okay, I wanna work on this. I wanna put work into this. Very diligent, okay? Let's get one more, thank you. Okay, yeah, so we have the Hierophant. So we have a lot of different energies happening here. Sagittarius, and let's talk about it. I'm going to go through, give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into the juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, it's like we have some competing energies happening here. On the back end, we have the Eight of Pentacles and the Hierophant. These are earthy type of energies, which 
I mean, as a fire sign myself, I know sometimes it's a good energy for us to focus on, but a lot of times it can make us feel like a little muddled down. So I'm picking that up already, especially with this fiery king of wands here. So it's something about responsibility or day-to-day -day life or following the schedule, like I'm already picking that up here on the back end. Okay, so we'll talk about it as we move through. Let's go through one by one because there's this competing energy happening. Position number one, we have the King of Wands. As I said, this could be a very important card in this reading. Um, in a fire sign reading, it could just represent something that could be coming towards you or what you might be feeling when I clarify it. Aside from that, if it's not another fire sign, so Aries, Leo, Sag, when I see this card, it's like big boss energy, very entrepreneurial. So when we see it with the Eight of Pentacles and the Hierophant, a lot of you could be trying to build some sort of business, build some sort of foundation, focus on things. Because with the King of Wands, aside from the entrepreneurial aspect, kings control their respective suit. And Wands is all about the inner fire, inner passions, what they're putting their energy towards. So a lot of you could be in that mind space like, all right, what should I be putting my energy into right now? Should I put my energy into this? Should I put it into that? And it could be a lot more structured than you're usually used to, okay? Because when I think of Sagittarius energy, it's more free-flowing. In, in my experience, a lot of Sagis are very free-flowing individuals. There's like a lot of structure that needs to be worked with in this situation or this time. But let's just keep moving, all right? I don't want to get hung up yet because I'm already getting intuitive vibes here, okay? Hopefully you're not feeling like pressured by whatever this, this system is. I'm getting so much structure and system. Moving to the center, we have the Eight of Pentacles. I like this card, right? It is one of my favorite cards. Generally, we see it when there is something someone wants to work on, okay? It could literally represent work. It could represent being about your Pentacles, and you could be in that mode, right? You might be working some... Uh, overtime, some double overtime. You might be doing some side hustles. You might be really focused on the pentacles and really solidifying yourself in that way. Or it could just represent work situations. But when I see the eight of pentacles, I think of someone that wants to improve something or put effort towards something or work on something. So you might be of that mindset, like, okay, well, I need to fix this. I need to improve this. I need to make this better. Okay, so there's an energy of improvement and hard work attached to this card. One thing I will say, about the Eight of Pentacles, it, since every card has positive and challenge, the Eight of Pentacles could sometimes represent somebody that works a little too much, right? So if there's someone in your life where like they're always working, always doing something like workaholic type of energy, it could be represented there. Now, moving to the back end, we have the Hierophant. It depends on what lens you look at this card through because there are some good positives here. The Hierophant could just represent a Taurus that you're connected to. Let's talk about some positives. It's very spiritual. When, when I see this with the Hierophant, it's a super snug connection to spirituality. So we really do like this, getting in tune with one's inner voice and their connection to the divine. So this could be very nice like that. It's something that's in your life for like the long haul. All right, so whether this is a person that's in your life for the long haul, whether this is a situation you've been going through for a long time, there's a sense of stability when we have this card. Now, it could also represent power structures. It could represent governments and churches and corporations. I say that the Hierophant is an energy that is within the box. It's not outside the box. It's within the box. So we have this day-to-day -day life, this structure, you know, one step at a time, like not the free-flowing energy that I'm normally used to with a Sagittarius read. Okay, so whether this is something you're dealing with or a person, like it's very, very structured by the book. Okay, so I want to dive deeper on all of it, Sagi. We'll see what changes when we clarify it. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle here for Sagittarius, please. Gods and spirit team, it's happening. And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. And I'm just giving you mine. What's going on at King of Wands? And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Sagittarius, drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right. King of Wands time. What's happening? Why is that King of Wands in the mix? So definitely different than what I was picking up last week. That's for sure. Okay. That's good. We have the Wheel of Fortune underneath this King of Wands. All right, luck might be on your side here, my friends. 
okay? Like if there is something, a situation or a problem you've been trying to deal with, like I do feel for a lot of you, luck could really go on your side here. This could also represent change and metamorphosis. So for a lot of Sagittarius, you could be in a really big time of change, like inner change, outer change, your whole dynamic of your world and outlook are changing in a very big way when we have this Wheel of Fortune. And it could happen very suddenly, okay? Regardless of all the structure I was feeling and the day-to-day -day life, when we get this Wheel of Fortune, there's an aspect of luck connected to you. Okay, so whether it's you recognize like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a lucky individual, or that person's very lucky, this is a really good card. It's spiritually protected, but there is big shift and change, okay? And we'll see how it plays out. Remember, all this structure is here. I want to see how it plays out throughout the reading, because the Wheel of Fortune, one, could represent the karmic cycles of life. So it could be a karmic situation or something, but it could also represent big change and metamorphosis. So I want to see how it plays as we move throughout the reading. Okay, so let's just put that down there. I don't feel like it's an overly complicated. For some of you, you might want to play the lotto or something when we have the Wheel of Fortune under your name or under a card that could represent you, right? Because that luck could be on your side in one way or another. So let's see what's happening with that Eight of Pentacles here. If not, like I said, it could be sudden shifts, sudden changes. That could absolutely be in the mix whether it's within you or with other individuals and situations. So let's see why that Eight of Pentacles is here. Thank you. Sun in reverse. Okay, yeah, this is somebody doing something, but they're not super happy about doing it. It's the energy of like, all right, well, I'm going to do it. I'm not wild about it, but I'm going to do it. Like there's a sense of duty there. Okay, so whether that's yours or someone else's energy, we have the Sun in reverse, not a bad card. Okay, not bad whatsoever. Even in reverse, it's positive. It could represent a Leo, so maybe you're connected to a Leo. That's a possibility. But seeing it in reverse underneath this Eight of Pentacles, it's like, all right, well, I know what I have to do, and I'm not super happy about doing it, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay, take that for what it's worth. Okay, that whether that's certain situations you're going through, certain individuals and people, like there's a sense of duty here. Like I, I need to do the right thing. I need to do what's right. Okay, or I'm not happy about something. I'm not happy about a certain situation, but I'm going to deal with it for whatever reason. Like, that's just the vibe I'm picking up here, Saggy. Obviously, only take it if it hits with you. But I don't feel like we need to complicate this. Watch out for issues in work in this time as well. Even though we have the luck on your side, we have the sun here under the eight of pentacles. I would say, like, watch out for clashing with authority figures in work, especially since this is a sign of Leo. So I would watch out for that, like tensions or button heads with authority figures. Let's keep moving over to the Hierophant, because this could also be an authority figure. So let's see why the Hierophant is in the mix, then we'll get in there and do a quick recap before we get into the Shadow card. There is change happening, that's the good thing here, Sagittarius. Regardless of what I said about the structure and stuff, this wheel does talk about a sudden shift, whether it's within you or within a situation. So why is the Hierophant in the mix? This will really tell us something, I believe. And I do feel like you've had change in recent weeks as well. Lots of shifting, lots of changing. Okay. We have the Ten of Swords in the upright underneath this Hierophant. So, like, if you're connected to a Taurus, there might be some big issues here. This could be a big warning here, my friends. When we have the Ten of Swords underneath the Hierophant, like something or someone um, that was really a part of your everyday life could be... Um, on its way cycling out when we have the Ten of Swords underneath the Hierophant, whether this is a person you have a lot of history with, this does represent some sort of big ending here, okay? Like, it's it's not a minor one, what I'm picking up here underneath this Hierophant, because when we see the Hierophant, once again, that's something that there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of depth there. There's reliability there. When we get the Ten of Swords underneath it, it's like, okay, let's remove that. So I would say this could be a warning on the back end that there could be various different things ending. And we did see it with the cycles changing and stuff like that. So that's just the vibe I'm picking up here on the back end. Take this as a warning. Or if you are recently processing some pain or some endings and things like that, it could go back to normal. There's a good mix of positive energy in here as well. Like it could be repaired. Whatever this energy, whatever this ending is, there's a certain level of like progress making it better and repairing it. But I would say like something that you are very used to dealing with, something or someone that you may have a lot of history with, there could be an ending in regards to that. Okay, so there could be a big ending there. 
okay, especially with the cycles. Let's go through and do a quick little recap. Okay. I could also say this could be somebody you have a lot of history with and they're going through a lot of pain. That could absolutely be the message. Like, remember last week's reading was they are nervous. They could also be in some sort of pain and anguish. So let's go through and do a quick recap here because there's a lot of different things happening in Sagi. If you kindly look in the box, position number one, we have the King of Wands with the Wheel of Fortune in the upright. This feels very good. Complete opposite of what we have going on here on the back end, right? So there could be lots of things changing within you. A lot of metamorphosis or things shifting suddenly, things changing suddenly. But luck could be on your side, regardless of the positives, ups, downs, and negatives and the structure I was feeling within there, luck can be on your side. Moving to the center, we have the Eight of Pentacles with the Sun in reverse. Watch out for button heads with authority figures in this time. I did say there's like a sense of duty here, like doing something, knowing what you have to do and just doing it, working on it, even though you're not super happy about it. It's like, all right, well, I know what I have to do and I'm going to do it. I'm not wild about it. But when we get to the back end, we have a bit of a difference in the energy because we have the Hierophant with that Ten of Swords something or someone that was like a part of everyday life like there could be an ending in regards to that showing up here some form of stability okay there's like a pain attached to it so whether this is a person you have a ton of history and connection with because remember the hierophant's like a card of marriage and engagement and stuff like that as well there could be someone in quite a lot of pain or stress over something and it's showing up so i would say when we have the wheel and the ten of swords like beware of endings or things going in and coming out of your life so please take a screenshot Saji. let's get a shadow card for you uh, that was the epitome of a mixed bag reading for sure because we have like so much positive but we also have some warnings involved so let's see what we have in the shadows for you my friends what's happening my guys what's happening with sagittarius please Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. I'm always doing lots of different bonus readings for my beautiful channel members, so please feel free to support the channel in that way if you so choose. Obviously, there's no pressure, but let's get you a shadow card here, my friends. What's happening in Shadows for Saggy? Before we wrap it up here, thank you. Okay, Six of Wands, that's a card of victory. So I'm not going to assign a negative energy. We'll talk about the shadow side of this energy, but I'm not going to assign a negative energy to a positive card. This could be you with a very deep internal drive to strive for the best, strive for victory and the best possible outcome when this shows up as a shadow card. Now, there can be a warning with this as a shadow card. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Don't call something a victory until it's completely in hand, right? But one thing we need to watch out for with the Six of Wands two things that this could be in the shadows one this could be an individual you're connected to that has a bit of an ego right someone that really has to win be on top they're the winner winner chicken dinner when this is a shadow card so watch anything egoic in this time um but another thing this is a card of attention right so there might be somebody that's wanting to get your attention or feels like they never get the recognition or attention they deserve but if that's your inner drive if that's what you're moving towards like the winds and coming out on top that's never a bad thing as long as you're not egoic about it that's what i have there saggy but yes my friends don't click away just yet i'm going to give you the details of the october subscriber surprise if you got your name in for the september subscriber surprise the winners will be announced after this week's fire and air readings but for october I'll be going back to one of the classics. I'll be giving away two copies of the Everyday Witches Tarot. It's one of the most beautiful decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. Second, let me know down in the comments if there's a zodiac sign that you clash with. If so, which signs do you kind of bump heads with? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of October, your name will be announced in the community tab. My friends, as always, much love, and I'll see you next time.